That's way quiet. That's just my headphones. It's quiet in my headphones too. It's like medium normal for me. Maybe we were just talking about the entire thing. Maybe we're just like, who knows what this podcast is going to sound like today. Well, do you want to just take this and like look at the audio? I don't think so. Do we just rip from here? Yeah. Well, I see the, I'm looking at the board right now. Waz is recording the audio. Waz got it. So, All right. Here we go. Okay. Well, there's Nation Radio us. episode something. We don't know. Tyler's gone. Normally he keeps traveling the episodes. I tried to find it very briefly. Admittedly, I didn't put very much effort in it. If I'm being honest, but we're here. Episode. Bleh. We should say about Tyler is that he did a demonstration in the office last week in which he came in and we all sat down and he showed us how to use all the fancy equipment in the room. But Tyler also said he was going to create a PDF document that we could use to look at because none of us absorbed any of what he said. Yeah. And he didn't make the PDF document. So now we're just winging it. And now he is on vacation. Hashtag avoid the grind. <laughs> but that's on brand for Tyler. Bag milk, Dan. Coomsy in here. Waz sitting in for Tyler. What's up? We got plenty of other stuff to talk about. The Young Stars tournament kicks off tonight. The preseason kicks off next week. Ho! Oh, getting excited. But first, we start off every podcast with a shout out to our friends at Oodle Noodle with the delicious debate. Mr. Nation Dan, what you got for us this week? Well, with the introduction of uh, Jack Campbell and his new Oilers equipment mask, I thought I'd go to the well uh, to try and make up for Tyler B. Not here And our delicious debate of the day is going to be which was your favorite Oilers goalie mask over the entire time you've been an Oilers fan? What is your favorite goalie mask over the entire time you've been an Oilers fan? Was I'm going to start with you. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'm going to go with uh, Dwayne Rolson's back in 2006, 2007. It was just nice and clean. Classic. Yeah. Gold cage? Yeah, yeah, gold cage. That was sharp. I yeah. liked the... There's a few ones that I liked. Um, Bill Ranford's back in the day. It was super simple. I just liked the color scheme on it. I liked when Cujo did the Oilers version of his classic mask. But for a minute, he had like an oil drippy mask that he also wore. Um, Cam Talbot, I liked the Ghostbusters thing that he did on his mask. There's been some good ones. Mine was Tommy Salo, I think. Tommy cool. Salo had that, I think it was supposed to be like a Viking or Thor, and it was just like a big jacked guy with a beard, I think, holding like the, the, the Thorish hammer. I can't remember. Yeah, I'm looking at it. He's got a, uh, a big sword. Yeah, it was sick. It was, it was like a Viking. Yeah. It was really badass. I it loved was. that as a kid. That was one of those things where I was like, oh, this is a cool thing about this sport when I was like nine years old. Yeah, I can, I'm looking at it right now. That's, that's a quality mask. Whereas Jack Campbell, he just went with the classic look. It's got the blue, the orange, yeah. the white, or there's logo on the side. Dan, what do you think? I'm just a huge fan of individual helmets. So like Cujo's mask to me is, is it's, that's something that's followed him around the league and he just changes the color scheme based on the team he's on. So for me, it was always Cujo. I thought Koskinen had some solid masks as well last year or even the year before. I don't know. Really, <laughs> I don't really remember masks too well. So like, yeah. I find some of the I find some of the more recent stuff has just been very like yeah. it pays homage to something that a previous goalie did here, which I would like to see a little bit more kind of uniqueness in helmet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. design. But I just find like right now there's so many good artists doing these guys' masks now that just some of the artwork that goes on them is so incredibly it's intricate. True. It's really true. And I think a lot of the guys, I think because of that talent, they just say, hey, this is the team I'm playing for. What are you going to do for me? And that's, that's why I also really respected guys like Jonas Hiller, where he would just rock a oh, matte yeah. black mask. He's just like, one. fuck it. I Arters miss the, that was good. the player style masks, like the one that like Dominic Hasek or Arthur's Urbe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like where he's wearing like a huge cage on kind of a player lid. Yeah. Or like Chris Osgood did the yeah, same I was, thing. I was thinking yeah. the same one. Yeah. yeah, you don't see that anymore. I would love to see a goalie come up now, like through juniors going into the draft where he's rocking a player right. bucket with a weird mask. Just Jofa equipment in general has got to come back. Yes. I was thinking about that earlier. Like, could you imagine if they just re-released the Jofa bucket from the 80s, the thing that had no protection? Like, they modernized the guts of the helmet, but the outside, the shell of it looked the exact same. Yep. I think people would like it. I wonder who owns the rights to that brand now. I I'm hope sure they also own the, the rights to Cooper all so those can come back say, as well. I'm I'll sure it's into one, it. of the, one of the bigger brands now has the rights to everything, but I could be wrong. Oh, it looks like Jofa is still alive. Do you know Jofa also does equipment for horseback racing? <laughs> that's probably where the helmets are. Maybe that's made. what they leaned into. <laughs> They're just like, you know what? Our hockey stuff, we're done. We, we own the 80s, own the 90s. Maybe they bring back leather helmets. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can kind of mix the gear up so you yeah. got half hockey, half like um, equestrian gear. Yeah. Yes. Or maybe hockey players could just start walk, rocking those helmets that the jockeys wear. Well, I'm sure with the little lid on top. Nuge would love that. They oh, also look so handsome. They make bandy balls too. Ooh, what, what the 
fuck's a bandy ball? You know what, bandy yeah, balls? What is, what is I've, I've never, heard, never heard of this. It's giant hockey. Bandy it's ball, that huge... looks like the big ball that you would throw during dodgeball in high school. Class. The Omnican ball? Do you guys ever that have is? that? When in, you're like in elementary school gym and they just brought this huge insane ball and it was called the Omnican ball? I remember the red rubber ones that had the distinct <laughs> smell and the sound when you would slap someone in the face with those when you were playing dodgeball. The air sound like... <sighs> or just like the... You know when it hits somebody? It's true. You knew you got a human. You knew when you caught human flesh with those balls. But what is this Omnican thing you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I want to. Can you Google Omnican that? Ball? Hold on. Omnican ball. The just, thing I like about it having was Cam just on a the huge ass ball. Just Waz know? Waz no, wouldn't no know because he was Waz born knows. in he was born in like 2005. So oh no, I definitely yeah. did not yeah. have a giant no. ball. You guys like never that. had the Omnican ball? No, we just no. had a parachute oh. that came oh. around. Yeah, I did the parachute thing too. Yeah, parachute. Parachute would come around every once. I love getting lost in that. It was like traveling into a different dimension when you went under that parachute. That was that was cool. It's so true. It's so it's just true. like could you like do kids now get a little sidetracked here? Maybe go <laughs> the yeah. Do kids now like go to do the parachute thing in the field and get just as excited as we did? Or now that they've got iPhone 14s in <laughs> yeah, their pocket, yeah. they're just like fuck this parachute. Yeah. I want to play. Well, we, I want to play Fortnite it. under here. It simulates it for you in a 3D version now on an in, app in the metaverse. Yeah. I saw a game that is being constantly advertised to me now on TikTok and Instagram where the literal point of the game is that you just pressure wash your deck and shit. Yes. Oh, wow. It's supposed to be just like a relaxing real life game where you can wash your house with a pressure washer. You just get a pressure washer and wash Yeah, your just house. get out there and do it. It's because I can't stop buying all that goddamn avocado toast. <laughs> yeah, just once I stop the avocado toast and get lattes from on my way into work. I'll be able to afford my own pressure washer. You won't need pressure washer simulator. Can, can we get an Omnicon Om, Omnicon? Uh, uh, Omnicon? Omnicon ball. Can we get one in the office? I feel like in 2022, uh, legal would not allow us to have those because the Omnicon battles would get intense and would break stuff, including each other. It looks like an Omnicon ball. I'm looking for the real big one here. Like the one that's that's huge is going to cost you like... Well, just the bladder alone is $120. Search by... There's a bladder? What do you mean a bladder? The bladder inside the ball. <laughs> oh, so you can ball, make a curve. If the, if the ball bursts, oh. you got to replace the bladder. <laughs> All right, here's a whole <laughs> big Omnicon ball kit. That's going to cost you, and you're going to get a few balls here, and you're going to get like a blow up thing and a this bag. This is so expensive. This is going to cost you for the premium kit is nine hundred and five dollars. Oh my goodness! Wow. And what? This no is, wonder schools only owned one. Yeah. This is say. this is weird because it has the dollar sign at the end of the number and also a comma for so, the, the cents. So I don't know if this is European. Are, are you are you saying <laughs> that Jay Woodcroft should uh, implement this into his practices? The Oilers should do that for their rookie camp this I year. Take so. take all the little Zoomer prospects you have and go run around in the field with the parachute and the Omnican ball. <laughs> One thing that I did do recently, Coombsy, that I feel like it's not an Omnican ball, but I feel like you would appreciate it. On Amazon, they have just generic wrestling title belts. Oh, fuck yeah. So this year I ordered one. So now we're going to have a The Answer title belt. Oh, that's sex. It's not a custom one like we were going to get a few years back. It's, it's just true. a shitty generic one, but I almost think that makes it better somehow. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think with that, like the, the, the grittier and dumber it looks, the funnier it is. Well, <laughs> wait till it comes here, pal, because you'll be excited. So I figure we come up with some kind of mannequin situation and we just tape a player's face to the mannequin, strap the belt around him. There's some content. Where's the, the, the big monkey? Uh, we, we traded it for an accordion. Remember we got the accordion. Oh, <laughs> there used to be an accordion here? There used to be an accordion here. <laughs> you, you know, and we couldn't get rid of the accordion. Then we traded the accordion for nothing. I, I, don't, I don't think kids on TikTok know what an accordion is. I well, could I introduce that. There's many kids that are stupid. Well, you should edit in the sound of an accordion music here. Yeah. Yeah. What's Just a little polka. The kids love polka. Yeah. A little polka. <laughs> <laughs> so is there an app of an accordion simulator that we could Surely get them to is. download? Surely there is. <laughs> Why learn to play a real instrument when you can play a digital version? Yeah, rock band. Uh, there you go. Delicious debate. <laughs> that was a really good debate. For our friends at Oodle Noodle, was... who has had the best goalie masks? That's the one. In Oilers history. Is there, what about uh, outside of the Oilers? Is there anybody that sticks out? I always remember Felix Potvans as a kid for some yeah. reason. Uh, I liked Belfour's mask. Belfour always had the eagle um, on his cheek. That was a good one. Tim Again. Thomas had one, I think. He had that kind of player bucket. Yeah. And Cheevers with his mask where it's the stitches. 
all the stitches on his face. Oh, you're going old school now. I'm going yeah, I just found, I, I quite like these old, uh, what is this, Freddy or Jason? This is Freddy, right? Freddy. These are the Freddy masks where you look Jason. like you're going to. You're right. Is it Jason? It was Jason. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big horror horror yeah. movie guy at all. Uh, these old school masks where it looks like you're going to kill someone. These, yeah. are, these are cool. Could you imagine now wearing those in 2022 where guys are ripping clappers <laughs> from the point at a hundred and some miles an hour? Just have shattered face masks everywhere. It'd be amazing. This one's good. It has the St. Louis Blues And logo. apparently that goalie killed someone. <laughs> It's a teardrop on, tear his... on it. He apparently Jesus killed a man. <laughs> Allegedly, in my opinion. I remember when I first learned about the teardrop. What is that it? That was a big day for you, was it? It was. I was in a white I have uh, McDonald's. Did someone have the teardrop and did they explain to you why they had it? No, my friend had to explain to me. I'm like, that guy had a nice tattoo. He's like, oh, okay. There you go. We should start a video series where it's just like Waz learning about general things. That's great. We would have endless content. <laughs> but what was the word Ryan Pike taught you? That was a very uh, basic sh- word, I thought. Sur- surly? Yeah, surly, Coomzy. I didn't I didn't get that. That was weird. I felt like... <laughs> Cam is nodding in approval. I felt like mm-hmm. it was like a, <laughs> a Gen Xer meeting a Zoomer. I was like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> Ryan's not that old. <laughs> no, he's not. But he has, uh, he has kind of a... He does have a... A flowery vocabulary. A mature vibe to him. I he could, does. I could see him drinking a nice scotch while running for Flames Nation. I want to know from you, if you're listening to this, best Oilers helmet for a goaltender that you can think of. If you have an answer that we didn't touch on, hit us up on Radio Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Just hit us up with some feedback. Dan asked a good question. I'd like to know the answer. Thanks. That's for our friends at Oodle Noodle. They're coming for you, Calgary. I heard that the location in Calgary is opening very soon and I'm torn on it because I don't feel like you should have the deliciousness that we have up here, but that's just me. But there is some former Edmontonians and Northern Albertaners that do live in Calgary. They're forced to against their will. And so now they get into a noodle. Mm-hmm. Dan makes a good point. And if you're lazy, if you're in Edmonton, like I am, it's Friday. Just order some noodle noodle with DoorDash. Ding dong. Get nudes. Cam, I want to turn this over to you because you wrote an article for OthersNation.com today. The Evander Kane settlement came through today. Seems like it's pushing pretty close to the start of the NHL season. I thought it was going to be over a while ago, but today Frank Saravalli had some news on Twitter. What's the latest on Evander Kane? Yeah, so for the context for this is Evander Kane's contract by the San Jose Sharks was terminated back in January because he violated a COVID thing. I think what he had was... A fake vaccine passport? Is that what it was? Allegedly yeah. or something was, like that? Yeah. yeah. It was, that was kind of the final straw. It seemed they didn't really want him around. Uh, anyways, they got rid of his contract, and then the NHLPA filed a grievance on his behalf in which his case was going to be, hey, like this was the wrongful termination. San Jose's case was, no, it was fine, so your contract should go away. As we all know, he signs with the Oilers, and then he re-signs with them after the playoffs, four-year deal, $20.5 million, which is more money than the cash he was owed in the San Jose contract. So it kind of seemed like, hey, like this is all finished up. But then the whole case kind of lagged on to the summer because the arbitrator, the NHL had for the case wasn't around in June or July for some reason. So it just kind of went on the whole summer. But then Frank uh, reports that San Jose is they've reached a settlement, Kane and the Sharks. So they're not going to go to arbitration at all, in which the settlement is San Jose is making a one time payment of some undisclosed amount of money, and it's going to ca- count against their salary cap from last year. So and they had $5 million of space last year, according to cap, uh, cap Friendly. My best guess is the money that San Jose is paying him is he had two signing bonuses, one for 2022-23 and then one for 2024-25 at $2 million each. My guess is he just got a check for four mil for both. That's my guess. It'll be interesting. Obviously, I understand why the number is not out there. That's the point of settling before an arbitrator gets their hands on it. But yeah, I bet you're probably right. Paying out his signing bonuses that he would have got on July 1st or whatever that is. Anyway, it makes the most sense to me. Yeah. What, what, what could have happened though, if this did go to arbitration, this would have been like the wildest and situation. And this is the weird part. Yeah. If what could have happened is, is if the arbitrator was like, you're right, you shouldn't have had your contract voided. His contract with the Sharks would have been reinstated <laughs> and his deal with the Oilers would have been wiped. So he would have again been with the Sharks, the $7 million cap hit for three years left. And what likely would have happened is the Sharks would have just traded him to Edmonton, and that might have helped solve their cap problem because you could just send somebody back. But here we are. Very strange. Weird, weird, weird situation. Super weird. I was like, even it was surprising that Kane signed a new contract with the Oilers before this was all settled in the first place. But here we are, September 16th on a Friday. It finally comes through a week before the preseason starts. So, What a bizarre saga. Hey. An extra chunk of change going to Vander Kane. And content for us to talk about. Amen.
Amen. Traffic flooding into Coombsy's article today. Get the entire recap on station.com. There you go. In other news came out yesterday, a couple of items that in a tweet from Daniel Nugent Bowman at The Athletic, after six long years of waiting, the Edmonton Oilers have finally got Jason Demers. <laughs> they brought him in on a PTO. If you don't remember, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Boz, do you know what I'm talking about? I do, yeah. All right. Six years ago, Peter Shirelli paraded Jason Demers and Milan Lucic around a yet-to-be-opened Rogers place. It was a big thing. It was a free agency thing. It was during that week period where you were allowed to talk to free agents but not sign them, even though they probably did, but they allegedly didn't or whatever the <laughs> fuck. It was a partially cloudy day. Yep. The sun was shining a little bit. And I think I feel like that was remarkable at the time because we had had a rough stretch. And I just, I, for some reason, I remember hearing them announce on the on the radio that they were driving around at that moment in a limousine. And that's, I, I don't know why that sticks out in my head, but it still does. That Demers and Lucic were driving around Edmonton in a limousine and it was partly cloudy. I just remember seeing them in hard hats. Hard hats oh, at Rogers' oh, place. Yeah. I remember that with Nurse and Connor. Mm-hmm. Well, and a guy like, I mean, fucking Sean Horkoff got paraded around that <laughs> arena's, the guts of that arena a thousand times, barely got to play there. Uh, if he did even play I don't there. think he did. I don't no, think he did. He, no, no, he they got traded, traded away to Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Philip Larson and I think a sixth round pick. Jeez. Oh, Philip Larson. Weird one. Never forget. Anyway, back to Demers. So, he did not sign with the Oilers, obviously. Milan Lucic did. He ended up with the Florida Panthers that year. Then he went to Arizona last year, had a cup of coffee. If you even call that five regular season games, four playoff games with Kazan Akbar's in the KHL. But now he's in town on a PTO. My question to you, and I'm going to start with cam right side as it is. Now you got CC Broberg or not CC, CC Bouchard, Barry, whatever order floats your boat. Does Demers fit in there anywhere? I guess so. I mean, I think they're just trying to bring as much veteran depth, in as possible so they have the option of starting Philip Broberg in the AHL just so that he can take on a big role maybe spend like a month playing top pairing minutes down there working on some specific stuff because he doesn't have that many games under his belt in North America so they probably don't want to throw him into the wolves so you have Ryan Murray Jason Demers two you know veteran defensemen who can fill in kind of reminds me of a few years back when they had Jason Garrison in the mix and it's like this guy's probably not going to play yeah, that's a, that's a real Jason throwback. Garrison, aka Jay Downton. <laughs> yeah, exactly the <laughs> doppelganger. But yeah, it's kind of like that where I would be shocked if Jason Demers and Ryan Murray combined to even play eighty-two games for the Oilers. I feel like they're just there to provide some depth early on, and then I think Broberg takes on a larger role later. Yeah, well, I think I think you nailed it, Cam, in saying that you know if both Demers and Murray are playing on this same roster in Edmonton at any point in this season. On a we've, pairing together. We've done some really bad things to get to that point. But I do think that this team has to have learned from last year. I mean, you look at a team with Darnell Nurse banged up, and then all of a sudden it was just kind of hold on for dear life and, and play some more team defense. So I think that there's nothing wrong with having some warm bodies that have played NHL minutes waiting in the wings yeah. for a possible injury. But... Does this tell, speaking of Darnell Nurse, does this say to you that Darnell is going to be out for a little bit? Not me. No? No, I don't, I don't think so. All. All, these, all, fact, all these veteran numbers and names coming in? In fact, I think the fact that they're lower end veterans, like a Ryan Murray, like a Jason Demers, means that Darnell Nurse, I mean, I'm guessing, obviously, that he's going to be fine, that he's ready to go. Otherwise, they probably would have brought in somebody, with I mean, somebody hopefully, with a little bit more gravitas than a guy who, you know, has barely played. That'd be a bad, bad, bad thing if Arnold Nurse was injured and they were like, you know what? We got Ryan Murray on the top pair. <laughs> well, yeah, it'd like, be awful. Yeah. I think that those are all, to me, those are all just replacement guys that you're looking at, like you said, Coom, less than 10 games for each of them. They're going to be serviceable. They're not going to get you burned. That you could game. probably clear waivers too. Yeah. Like, not the end of the world. Yeah, that's good. Well, as what do you make of a Jason Demers PTO? I think it's just decent experience to have on the back end, especially with some of the young players coming around. I think Ken Holland was really hoping that uh, Duncan Keith would have c- came back. But you have to settle with Jason Demers in terms of experience, and it's it's a depth signing. It's not really going to hurt you. Uh, hopefully not. Like hopefully they're not playing lots of minutes. Uh, hopefully none. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, there's no harm, no foul in this one. To me, I just see it as there's never a bad thing having competition at training mm-hmm. camp. You never know what's going to happen. Maybe 
like heaven forbid, knock on wood, that somebody gets banged up in the preseason or whatever, and all of a sudden Jason Demers has to step in, Maybe, right? Like, well. if you can have a situation where a Jason Demers, a guy who at this stage has played 699 NHL games, if he steps in because you kind of need him, at least as a stopgap, that's probably a better situation than having to call up like a, I don't know, a Vincent DeHarnay or yeah. some guy who's just never played because he happens to be right-handed. I don't even know if Vincent DeHarnay is right-handed. That's he how is little... right-handed, yeah. Oh, nice. I nailed that one. Excellent guess by me. Is he like 27 or something? He's like quite he is, player. yeah, because yeah. he did four years of college, and then it was a two-year AHL deal, and they just signed him to the entry-level deal. Like I heard a lot of good things about him as well. He's like very, it's like six foot seven or something. Yeah, like he's six foot seven. Him and Dmitry Samarukov were the top pair down the stretch last year for Bakersfield. Hmm. Could be interesting. Other news that came out yesterday, along with the Jason Demers PTO, same tweet from DMB at the Athletic. Oilers are reportedly out on Vertanen. To me, makes that's. I mean, of course, why shouldn't they be? Good. I didn't understand it anyway. Good. I don't. Yeah, I don't get what, why we were in on it. But also, him signing a PTO doesn't necessarily mean we're out of him either. I, like nope. I, people, I think people are kind of forgetting this PTO thing just because we've. It's been a minute since the Oilers have really brought in any kind of substantial PTO. Alex, the answer, Chieson, J- uh, Jason Garrison. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But <laughs> big names, man. <laughs> but Who's that these, one Russian. These are not guy guys that Valentin miss. Zykov. No, Chachev. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a good pull. There you go. Yeah, and so, I mean, like, none of those guys are, are signed for sure, ago. but you get to see them work with this lineup. And also, uh, like, I don't know, the amount of sniffing around that we did on Jake for Tannen tells me that I think that they're going to be in the mix for a contract still. I I don't know. I've just I was of, surprised that he even got that much attention because exactly beyond it. beyond the legal thing, um, his numbers in the KHL weren't at all good. I no, mean, they were terrible. Jonathan Willis pointed out a few days ago, just familiar names that we all know in Oilers land who had a better point per game than him in the KHL. And those names are Josh Curry, Timu Hartikainen, Nail Yakupov, Anton Slepyshev, Ryan Spooner, uh, Taylor Beck, and Marcus <laughs> Granlund. That is a list. That is a list of Oilers wow. legends if I have ever heard one. <laughs> that sums up the decade of darkness really well. I feel like if Demers had played a few more games, he'd be on that list too. I'd, I'd, I'd bring back Ryan Jones before bringing in, uh, what's his name? Bertanen. Yeah, Bertanen? I already forgot his name. I just, I don't know, like, to me, the fact that the Oilers' name came up, like, uncomfortably long in that conversation. Yeah, I agree. Before. Well, even a couple of days ago, Tommy Gazzola was like, it's either going to be Edmonton or Calgary. Yeah. And we're like, oh, really? Why? That's... And then I'm like, oh, well, hopefully it goes to Calgary. Ho- hopefully. But then we had Scoops Quadrelli out in Vancouver. He was he was sniffing around, talking to agents out there, and he's just like, honestly, man, I don't think it's going to be Edmonton. No. Yeah. I believe him. There's enough guys in the mix that, I mean, it always seemed to me that oh, they were kind of like, okay, if you need, you need to dump some salary cap, so it's probably going to be Poole Yarby or Warren Fogle. I know, controversial thing. Uh, they probably wanted to just have some depth, but there are other guys you could just call up and try there. I mean, yep. you can throw Dylan Holloway on the right side. I don't think it's that big of a deal. You have Justin Bailey, too. He's always put up unbelievably mm, good numbers in the AHL. I could also see a guy like Xavier Borgo coming yeah. in and stealing a spot because that kid's got all kinds of skills. He's know. advanced, yeah. He was fantastic in the QMJHL. Then you have veterans too. Seth Griffith, Greg McKegg. There's names. Greg McKegg forever. Number 69, Greg McKegg. Nice. You didn't pick it though, you coward. We were all waiting. Has there ever been an Oilers 69? Not that I could no, find. Very rare in the NHL. It's been like yeah, three Greg McKegg was the only one I could actually find yeah. in an in a NHL jersey. So Cam's looking for that. Uh, mentioned some prospects. The Young Stars tournament starts tonight in Penticton. We are going to have Chris Faber from Canucks Army covering it for the network. So he's probably going to have some video slash written content coming this weekend along with Cam regarding the tournament. What do you guys make of this tournament now? Because there was a time when, I mean, we're talking about Taylor Hall, Nugent Hopkins, like that era into Connor McDavid, where the Young Stars tournament was kind of the first look at the next guy who was going to come into the lineup and supposedly be the savior. Now it's a lot different. What do you make of the Young Stars tournament now? I I like it a lot just because it puts rookies into the same class against each other, and then that's when you really get to feel, you know, you're seeing you're seeing a more true kind of indication of their skill set versus when they show up to train, like when Borgo shows up to training camp and he's up against NHL size players so for me i just it's it's a cool litmus test for your for your prospects but at the end of the day it's all just you know it's all just getting them playing hockey and that's the best part about it 
What do you I, think, I always found it was like a fun way to kick off the year. It's like the hope springs eternal. Like it's a kind of, it's kind of like spring training in baseball when you're watching a game in early March and you're like, oh yeah, it's the seventh inning and everyone's getting pulled and I'm going to get to see the team's number five to 17th ranked prospects come in and do something. And um, yeah, and that's kind of what this is. I remember all the way back in the day, like you, you pointed out, it was, you know, Magnus Pyarvi, Jordan Eberle, all of their first ever looks we had of these guys, Anton Lander, first ever looks of them wearing an Oilers jersey was always a fun thing and it was fun that it was going up against another team's prospects so if you have beef with a Vancouver fan that's your friend or whatever you could be like oh your prospects all suck so you can let quads and Faber know that you know every Vancouver prospect (laughs) is dog shit because you know we have Borgo and Holloway and Broberg ripping it up in Penticton to me, I like the baseball analogy in the sense that for me, the Young Stars tournament was always like pitchers are reporting. You know what I mean? It's like it's getting close to business getting time, there. but it's not quite business time. It's Hope Springs Eternal time. It's You're yeah. getting excited about the prospects. Someone's going to have a big performance and we're going to be like, that's the guy. It's going to be somebody weird. Somebody weird's going to do it and then they'll like- give them a chance to be the preseason champ. Lord knows we love our preseason champs around here. It's going to be like Dino Cambeats. Who's one of the? He's gonna n- just score a game like He's every score game. Four I mean, goals. I Everyone's Nash. gonna be like, "This is the big man." <laughs> Ty Nash. Ty Nash. Someone like that, you know? Absolutely, I get it. I get it. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Cornerstone Insurance because they have got all the insurance products you could ever hope to need, like prospects. They're kind of like insurance for the Oilers down the line. You're gonna need them, maybe, hopefully, maybe. Hope at Cornerstones, they've got everything you need, just in case. Auto, residential, commercial, life insurance, cornerstoneins.ca. Mm-hmm. Get a quote, submit a claim, get the whole process started right on the website. Again, cornerstoneins.ca. Before we get How's to- How's this for a tagline, Bag Milk? Go for it. The people, the best kind of people that you never want to have to speak to. Yeah, I'll buy that. Huh? I'll that buy works. that. There you go. And if you miss it- for free. Go back a couple episodes- Tyler told the whole story about Cornerstone helping him out to insure the nation truck. Helpful well, folks go. over there. Helpful Beautiful. folks over there. Uh, before we move on, Dan, I know you want to mention the Hall of Fame, the Ring of Honor, whatever yes. we're calling it at Rogers Place. You were in here last week when we talked about it. So go I, I missed out, and I just think that that's, it's such a good little, again, the Oilers are hitting on so many little low-key things that are helping fans engage and, and helping fans just kind of become and stay Oiler fans throughout no matter what the results are. Obviously, the results right now are going to be really positive, but I just I love the idea of this Ring of Honor, and I'm so excited to hear about the announcements. I'm sad that we have to wait till November. But anyways, you guys did a great job covering it last week. Thank Who's you your first two picks? Mine were Smitty and Doug Waite. I, 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 to, I responded to your tweet, and I said, like, to me, it's Smith and Smith. I, I just, Mike Smith? Yeah, <laughs> Mike Smith and, <laughs> and Corey Smith. Uh, no, uh, Jason and Ryan. To me, Jason Smith, Gator, he's just, he personifies what this team meant in the 90s. It wasn't always the prettiest, but goddamn was it rough, and it had a good amount of effort to it. Uh, and then Ryan Smith, I mean, you just you can't say anything bad about that guy when it comes to being an Edmonton Oiler. So, uh, yeah, Jason Smith and Ryan Smith would be my two picks. But I just, there's really not two answers that are wrong, and that's the best part. Kumsi, who's your first two? Uh, well, I kind of thought because they said in the release, they said created to honor outstanding contributions or service to the Edmonton Oilers Hockey Club by past members of the organization may include players, coaches, trainers, staff, execs, anybody like that. So we know that all the banners are already going in. So your Gretzky's, Messier's, blah, blah. I kind of figured uh, they would have something for Joey Moss there. That would make sense. Um, make a ton of sense. Ryan Smith is an obvious one, but I wondered if they were going to do kind of like a big 80s themed thing. So maybe yeah. they could honor Joey Moss, maybe somebody like Mac T. I don't know. I kind of thought that like it would make sense for Ryan Smith to be in the inaugural one, but it would also make sense for Ryan Smith to have his own one next year where he's the prime right. focus. Because <laughs> yep, right. I don't know if you want like a Ryan and Jason Smith, like that would make a ton of sense to go in together as being like a big, here's like the late 90s, 2000s Oilers and have them all going together. That's what I thought That's made sense, point. but you know. Who knows? We'll see. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But yeah, no, I like that. I like the the Joey Moss. I think is a no is brainer. a pretty solid option. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Waz, who's your first two? Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously Ryan Smith's the given. Uh, the second one, I'm gonna go with someone that suggested on the socials, Bill Hunter. That's wild, Bill Hunter. Yeah, the that's man who one. essentially like helped found the Oilers. I think brought them into the WHA. So I think that's a really good shout. 
Uh, some people, I think Georgia Rock might be a good idea as well. Punch yeah. down the line. I, I, I'm with Coomzy on that one, though. Like, Georgia's needs his own, yeah, his own yeah, I- like, event, and it needs to be a big thing. It's nice that they're honoring these Oilers, though. Like, yep. not just, like, someone who had a, you know, with Smith, we all know how, what kind of impact he had, not only with the team, but the city. But you, know, you have guys like Sean Horkoff, Fernando Pisani, guys who are just fan favorites, cult heroes here, right? And it's nice that there's a way to honor them. I like that. Honor the Holo 6 team. Yeah, yes, they really yeah. should. That's why when I talked to Rafi Torres, I'm like, hey, man, you're like an Oilers legend. And he's like, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> so. Well, we all remember some big Rafi Torres <laughs> yes. moments. Man, like, like, it's like when I was, that's exactly what I told Waz when he told yeah. me he talked to Rafi Torres, where it's just like, I remember him killing Milan Mahalik. Yeah. He changed him as a player. Who was the D-man in the Detroit series? That was the ship. I think it was in game two. He crushed a D-man behind the net. Do you remember who it was? <sighs> I can't remember. I, I, was just, t- I always remember Chris Pronger destroying yeah, Dan Cleary. Yeah, that was for, for me, anyone on that but, 06 team is a legend. Yeah. Dick Tarnstrom. Yeah, Dick Tarnstrom is amazing. That's Yaro, right. Yaro Spod Spod check. check. They love that one outside. The woods. <laughs> yeah, people people, outside, people just outside, big, outside just started laughing. Big, big fans of Yaro Spod Check. Really intense. Uh, a couple of other just general NHL items that I would like to get to. The Saddle Dome is collapsing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not happy about that. Like, I would be, but I'm not. Why? Why, was I'm going to a preseason game there, so I kind of want to survive. They put a net up to catch them, was It's okay. Earlier this year, engineers installed netting around the ring beam to catch any pieces of concrete that appeared to be imminently ready to fall. That's just, that's Uh, not good. Structurally, there are no issues, though, according to the engineering firm. However, having pieces of concrete... Potentially falling on patrons outside is not a great thing. <laughs> After concrete fell from the Saddle Dome's ring beam, punched a hole in the roof of a covering for the building's <laughs> west entrance. If you've been on a nation bus trip to Calgary, I was Google Mapsing, and I'm pretty sure that's where we normally enter the building. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're planning something. <laughs> wow. Okay, so behind the scenes, curtain peak. The Flames have made it this year. Now it is harder to purchase tickets to the Battle of Alberta than it's ever been. And so I think that they're just doing us a service by trying to keep us away from that decrepit old building. So in your opinion, the Flames care about our health? Yes, I think they're trying to How save Edmontonians. Because they uh, they I'll make you purchase extra tickets now if you want to purchase oh, any tickets for that one. Wow! Yeah, it's we'll like tell you the packs. we'll tell you the math about it afterwards, but it doesn't make any sense. So, so you so it's harder for us to go down there now. Darn. Well, well, we could hypothetically like we could just do a trip down to Calgary. Oilers Nation fans go watch the Flames play the Minnesota Wild, and we can just show up with Oilers stuff it's and true. just boo their players. <laughs> so if, that's what, that's what, that's, if that's what the Flames want, then fine. We should just go outside. We should just stand outside of the arena as a group and watch until the concrete falls. <laughs> That's, we just stand there and we wait until we see chunks of concrete. The, uh, the Condors are playing there this year as well against the. Uh, oh, their, that's fun! Yeah, yeah, that is fun. We should do a little Condors trip. I've never watched an AHL game Same. in person. I would love to go to a Condors game. Let's do it. Minor well, league hockey is fast. Working on it now. Um, Let's go. I, I think they should move the Flames to Red Deer. In this case, well, actually, Edmonton owns Red Deer after beating them in the second round of the playoffs. That yeah, was move part them of the south. Oh, okay, move I them, didn't know that. Move them south somewhere. Well, we, we have Rexall. Rexall's probably in better shape than the Saddle Dome. So the weird part is that it is in better shape than the Saddle Dome. It is. Now it's and confirmed. It hasn't been yeah. fucking operational for years. Can we now. swallow the Calgary Flames and have like the Battle of Edmonton? We can just call them Oilers Two. Yes, <laughs> shit Oilers. Alberta Team. Yeah, that. There's, there's Manchester City. There's Manchester United. You know, it's like Manchester Two. According to City General Manager of Infrastructure Michael Thompson, the building is currently safe and structurally sound. So we're going to continue evaluate and review if any further requirements are needed. Wow. Buildings of this age generally require maintenance, just like any other building or facility that we have. Okay, so if you're reading between the lines there, that's a city person telling you to look up everywhere you go in Calgary because <laughs> what he says is fine in the Saddle Dome obviously is happening in other places too and they don't have the nets up. So I encourage you to go to the CBC article where the news broke that the Saddle Dome is falling apart because they've got pictures of this ring thing, the ring beam around the Saddle Dome and it just looks so decrepit and just, it looks like one of those abandoned cities over in yeah. like in China or like, like in Russia or something where the infrastructure is collapsing on itself, but there are active games going to be happening there very soon. It's, well, it's moral like, of the story, Saddle Dome, a dump. 
That new uh, HBO show, The Last of Us, is set in a post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic era, and uh, Calgary's uh, in the show. Did you just call The Last of Us an HBO show? I thought it was a PlayStation yeah, well, it's game. It's becoming a show. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought the game itself and, and was it's, enough and, of a show. And it's featured it's in true. Calgary. They use Calgary as a location. So really? This kind of makes sense. Oh wow, that's funny. Yeah. Interesting. Probably, they probably shot it at the saddle. Though. There you go. That's what I mean, right? So, cool. Other thing I want to mention before we get to ask the idiots here. Uh, just wanted everybody's thoughts real quick. The Jets announced today that they are stripping the captaincy from Blake Wheeler. I thought that was an interesting move. Like Wheeler, beloved in the city by the fans. Who knows what's going on in the dressing room? But I thought that was interesting. Taking the old C off. That is a page out of the San Jose Sharks playbook. Hashtag. No captain until an airport. Oh, well, then they're never going to have one. They got to do it. They've the, got to make a stand. The Jets have always had an issue with this stuff. Like we've been talking about them being kind of fractured since, I don't know, like five, six years ago when Dustin Bufflin was there. There was talk that there was like very clearly two hmm. camps on the team. Because remember we threw a Vander Kane's clothes in the shower. Yeah, something like that. Because we heard all these stories about how important Matt Hendricks was when he was there. Yes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then because that's that was back in the, the, the dark years between playoff appearances for the Oilers. And we were like, oh, we should have never let Matt Hendricks go because he's like a key dressing room guy he with the, the Jets because everyone on the Jets hates each other, apparently. So this kind of makes sense. I don't know why they don't just blow it up. No, on paper, yeah. they're a really good team. Well, like you got Pierre-Luc Dubois, who's already said, you know, I'm a free agent in two years, but I'm not re-signing here. So that's a trade Insane. request without a trade request. He's accomplished nothing in the league. Yeah, yeah exactly. You've got Shifley, who's kind of humming and hawing about even being open to an extension in Winnipeg. And now this thing with Blake Wheeler, Blake like what's Wheeler going on there? Walks into a room with less stuff on it just shirt. blow it up trade um i don't know you got tons of guys you could you, they could do a pretty wicked rebuild you trade away hella bucks somebody would give up an insane we tried for him. we tried, we tried yeah, yeah we were really we pushing for that yeah. yeah we i remember we uh came up with an idea that w w was hypothetical that was the bouchard for hella buck yep. discussion mm -hmm. that was crazy they yeah. almost took it we heard really well, no wait well, who almost took it i mean i mean the jets the people that hurt like jets saying. fans what we made up in our heads is that they almost took we it. sound like and a then, fax to kevin we had a, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and then we had a report come out that said that we were interested in hellebuck which i, I sent, think was us i sent shovel day off a message on nexopia and he was really open <laughs> to it <laughs> this is just us like spinning the content while we're just <laughs> making <laughs> shit up this is what tyler's not here you know what when tyler's not here i'm allowed to do whatever i want jets like have it. captains not no, the they Winnipeg don't. Jets, though. The only cap you know who they should make captain is the lady who runs that uh, that that chicken place, Mitzi's in Winnipeg. The They've got excellent tendies. You know what? Figurehead captain, that big <laughs> photo go. of the queen that they uh, have there. Uh, uh, I'm just saying. Is that that's not at that or, or their main arena? That was though. the old one. That's their old one. Yeah, that, was the old one. Yeah. that was a, all of the arenas in Canada had that. Like I swear they had a picture of the Queen at Maple Leafs Gardens as well. They pulled out the one in Winnipeg though. Like I think it was a year or two ago. They actually pulled out the OG one. Oh. I don't know where it's at now though. All right. That's, that's what killed her. She was disappointed. The Jets. I get it. Uh, hot or no hot cold performers. That comes after. Ask, Ask the idiots you. is up first. I got a couple of questions here, boys. They submit these into my email. Tyler got one sent to him. So he forwarded that to me. So I got three questions this week. If you don't know the bit, I asked the boys a question and they gave me their first thoughts because I haven't seen any of these little. Actually, I'm going to start with cam on this first question for Ask the idiots. If you missed it, Tyler pitched in a quote unquote celebrity baseball game last weekend. <laughs> so that he loaded the bases on balls, by the way, that is very important to mention there. This question comes in. I'm going to ask Cam first. He does Blue Jays nation radio twice a week with Tyler. Tyler has to pitch against the other people on this podcast. <laughs> what is the outcome of your at bat? I'm certain that I could um, hit like a line drive off of Tyler. I am I have, of this. I am certain. I'm positive if Tyler tried to strike me out that he couldn't. I have I have a few questions. What mm -hmm. level of like what type of pitching is he doing? Oh, we're he doing it. We're doing fastball. He's, he's he throwing was, like baseball. He was yeah, overhand fastball. throwing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. If he if Tyler um, tries to groove in a fastball, I will take that to the opposite field. <laughs> Just because I play slow pitch and I'm kind of a big deal now, um, <laughs> oh, wow. I'll say I'll hit a single into left. Was you're pitching again, or Tyler's pitching at you? What are you doing with that pitch? That ball? Whatever Dan said, because I know nothing about baseball. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say I'm taking that fucker yard. Uh, Tyler's got no gas. Over He's the river? Oh. <laughs> if we are playing at, tell us. down at or, uh, Remax Field, yes, Remax. I'm going to hit it out of the park and over the river. John Ducey. I like that, though. That's creative. <laughs> Tyler has got no gas. He's got no arm. 
But doesn't he need to give you like a little bit of velocity to get that far though? He's just gonna lay it in, uh, just like a little log, nice little 40 like it's at the uh, the home run derby. There you go. Can An you old bag milk's gonna take him yard. Can you do the beer bat? Yes. There we go. We should do this. This is something we could do in the next month before it snows. Easy. Oh, we could absolutely. Do we, this. we should do this. We this just have this. to make Tyler show up. Tyler, me. yeah, Tyler can pitch to all four of us, and we'll all see what what we can do with like Tyler's it. uh with Tyler's little fastball. He's gonna plunk like four of us. Oh yeah, there's guarantee he hits at least one of us. Mm-hmm. When he says walked, he meant he hit people. No, no, we, no, walked. He, he just yeah, he just walked. He just loaded the bases oh, on man. walks. Maybe I, I I think I could also draw a walk against Tyler, and I'd be happy to do it. I'd be like, you know what, Tyler? I, yeah, I just drew a walk. I would draw a walk on Tyler because I think it would annoy him that I drew the walk. Chirp him the whole way down the first base, and line. I'm slowly walking to first base, just giving him the business the whole way. Yeah, I know I should ask Tyler this question, but he's not here. So avoid the grind. What was th- so? How did he get invited there? Was it because he said he was a pitcher and no, he's a celebrity? He's a big celebrity. He's but a big it's celebrity. A big deal. But, big but like, celebrity. How, who who else was pitching? And were they all doing walks too? It was just Tyler. Yeah, it was just Tyler. Every single no. Oh I, I don't know. The, I don't know the mechanics of why yeah, he was pitching. That's but so, he used to ugh. pitch when he played oh, fastball okay. once upon a time. Gotcha. And now he's really bad at it. Yeah. Now all he's right. got no gas. There you go. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going Tyler, to rec- Remax. He's Open got a little baby arm. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Word on the street. <laughs> Tyler's got a little baby arm. <laughs> Nation Dan, question number two. It seems like quite a few people are high on Stuart Skinner. Stuart Skinner. <laughs> it seems like quite a few people are high on Stuart Skinner, including myself. How long is it going to be until Skinner takes the crease away from Jack Campbell? My guess, two years. That's what Jack Campbell signed up for, right? Is two years? He's f- for five years. Five years, 25 mil. Oh. I'm going to say, I'm going to guess by the start of next season. I bet you Stuart Skinner starts more games next year than Jack Campbell. I thought that was By the next plan. year? Like next yeah, I feel, season? I don't know. I just, I feel like Stuart's got this. I'm very confident. I didn't get to meet him on the weekend, Was What about you? Oh, he's a very, a very fine gentleman. So where do you think? Uh, I don't know. It's tough to say because I want to hope Jack Campbell can actually perform to the length of his cr- contract. I mean, we paid him a lot of money. I hope we, he doesn't falter after a year and a half or two years, right? Like, you want to get the best out of him for the next, like, three years, I think. So I, I'm, I'm going to go with the long game here and give it three years for Stuart Skinner. But I think that they're going to end up playing a good chunk of games together. Like, it's going to be very split, honestly. Yeah, that's kind of what I think, too. It seems like this is kind of a 1A, 1B tandem thing going on. Like, Jack Campbell, his career high in games is 49. And before that, it was 31. And 49 was last year. So, I mean, I think Ken Holland even said outright the plan was to split it kind of like 50-30. So, I wouldn't even be tremendously yeah. shocked if by next Which year Which is it was, great. Yeah. Because cool. there was a period where when was it like we had Cam Talbot and Laurent Brassois between the pipes, and every time you put Brassois in, you'd be like, "Oh shit, here we go." And um, who was the other the 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 monster Jonas Gustafsson? They had oh, as well. Jesus. Oh fuck, that's they, a name I forgot. That was an Gustafsson and Brassois in that uh, Jason LaBarbera. Well, that was way before. Was like but in fast. that season, Tal- Talbot played I think seventy five. <laughs> yeah, he's burnt out. Oh yeah, that one so, he played just an extreme amount. That was when he broke uh, Grant Fuhr's single season record. Yeah, because. Yeah, I think more teams in the league are doing the 1A, 1B thing, so I bet you we see some kind of 40-40-ish split, give or take five games either way. You never see, like, the Marty Broder 70 games a season anymore. No. Who led the league last year? Oh, I'm going to guess Vasilevsky. Okay, you guys all put in some guesses, and I'll look. I'm going to say Vasilevsky or Shesterkin. Mm, I'll go Vasilevsky. Dan? I said Vasilevsky. Right? Are you looking yeah, at my I screen? Look at screen yeah, so <laughs> it's it's UC Soros change. who had oh. 67. Hell, oh, really? 66. Yeah, no one talks. Well, see, that's interesting because UC Soros oh, missed the end of the right. season at a time which was probably the most critical for that team. Got mm-hmm. They got absolutely stomped in the playoffs because he wasn't their goalie and David Riddick wow. sucks. I mean, they were. Oh, wait, they lost. The they Blues lost to first, Colorado. Right? Yeah. They lost the Blues first, didn't they? No. No. Colorado's, they got swept by Colorado. Oh, Colorado the Blues, beat, ruled the Blues beat Minnesota. I would not say that UC Saros would have made a difference. They might have won one game. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't That's think they would have got swept. No. Because that, that third string goalie they had in Ingram played pretty well. Yeah, but like was there was that first game when Dave Riddick was in net and they all, they like let in 10 or some shit like that. Like I don't remember how many it was, but it was not That's good. That's on them to have started Dave Riddick though. Well, big save Dave. He uh, no save wasn't, Dave. The, wasn't the same after that stick toss. He actually, yeah, honestly, like did he have a single good start in his career after no, that? He I'm fell really, off a cliff. He really did. Big save. 
Waz, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, what's going on? Last question. Ask the idiots. If you could choose one song to be played before an Oilers game to get the crowd pumped, what would be your selection? This listener is, wants Fat Lip by Sum 41. Shout Jesus. out to 2001. Okay, I'm going to go with a throwback. So I used to play this back in NHL 10 all the time. Um, Cinderella Man by Eminem. That's a good jam. I don't know why. It just hit different when I was playing NHL 10 and then the team was, teams were walking. I was like, holy shit, this is actually really good. So It's a good jam too. Coombs, you got a, an intro song for the Oilers that would be a little bit better than what they got now? Yeah, I would go by with The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Just get everyone feeling a little somber before the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would take it back to Pump It. I think that should be the Oilers thing yeah, forever. Okay. forever. I, I, I wish they could bring that I back. love it. I thought you were going to go with something just even more obnoxious, like The Battle of New Orleans by Johnny Horton or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just like so stupid. Uh, Dan, you got a guess for an intro song? 17 minutes of In a Gata de Vida, mm. every game played by Oregon. That's, that's sick. That's what I would, that's how I would get it. the crowd pumped up every time. I right after there's a reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's why you got to do it. Play the organist. Everybody's going to be fired up by the time she's done playing for 17 minutes straight. I've been trying to push this, my pick, for years. I've written about it on the website a bunch of times. Invaders Must Die by The Prodigy is a great song for exactly that, they wouldn't do it. It's like, it's probably too English for them. Liam would like it, but nobody else would. I say Invaders Must Die by The Prodigy would be my pick. So there you go, Ask the Idiots. Um, submit your questions for next week. I like this segment. It good. That's that good. Fun. It's it fun. Yep. Waz, get the buttons ready. It is time for Hot and Cold Performers of the Week. Let's get to see if Waz can do these buttons. We are doing a little pre-show prep with Waz, and he's trying to figure out... I like what he's looking at the roadcaster right now, Dan. Look at him. He's concentrating. Yeah, he's Give a little test, Waz. Go for it. Hot or cold? Big guy is smoking, smoking hot. Okay, so you got your hot buttons. We start with the cold, though. We're starting off with our veggies. Waz is flipping through the buttons. <laughs> Give that one a test. Go for it. Oh, that's cold. Maybe Whoa. crank up that fader, too, on the old buttons. Whoa. Yep. There you go. Starting with Waz, since he is the man with the buttons, for our friends at Twig and Berries... Go to twigandberries.ca, use the promo code NATION15, you'll get a discount on your order. Or if you're in St. Albert, just go check them out and shop. In store, I should say. Maybe you'll see Tyler there shopping for new undies. <laughs> Cam likes that. <laughs> and also, if you go to the website, you get to spin the discount wheel that always pops up on the website. It's fun. Get yourself a discount. It's a good time. I promise. And, as it was last week, the Nutsack Groin and Body Hair Trimmer, currently on sale. Fix up, look sharp. Was. For our friends at Twig and Berries, your cold performer of the week. You. The fuck? Hot, you're hot and the cold. F- the fuck? For your what take on Lord, on Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. I they're, was not a fan of that. Yeah, they're insanely boring. I mean, I disagree with you, but uh, everyone's entitled to <laughs> their own opinion. It's just me. Uh, won 13 Oscars for a reason, but, you know. Because everybody's got bad taste. Give yourself a button, Waz. Oh, that's cold. There you go. <laughs> These are too soft. Do the like same this. ones. Push up with a little velocity next time. Okay. Coomzy, your Twig and Berries cold performer of the week. I think I'm going to do baseball for both of them. That that That's usually what I did when I was when when we did this in the past. Uh, I'm going to criticize the American League Central Division in Major League Baseball. I don't think that they should send a team to the playoffs this year because all five of the teams are terrible. Who would be leading that division right now? Right now it's Cleveland, and they're 76 and 66, and they... Their, their whole franchise and what they're all about is they seem to actively not want to be in the playoffs. They always get rid of guys, and the White Sox are the next best team here, then the Minnesota Twins are kind of imploding. It's just all these dog shit teams. You may as well just have the whole AL East in there. I don't know. We saw the Cleveland Guardians, and they played pretty good. <laughs> they just pretty demolished good. the yeah, fucking Jays when we were there. They, they kicked the shit out of the Jays back in, uh, <laughs> in August so when we were there. For us to witness it. It was garbage. Well, that's because they are uh, like they get to play Kansas City and Detroit all the time, these terrible teams. So they have all this energy when they come and play You know the teams that are burnt out from actually having to go up against a good division. So I think the AL Central is a joke. And it, just because you win a division doesn't mean you should be in the playoffs. Let them let them have their AL uh, fucking AL Central banner. They can celebrate winning the division with eighty six wins or whatever it is. But don't put them in the playoffs. It's a waste. Oh, that's cold. Is that going to be it for all of them? Nation Dan, your Twig and Berries cold performer of the week. Ah, uh, well, I finally was. Uh, it's going to be myself uh, for breaking my lifelong streak of not getting COVID this week by getting COVID. And COVID sucks. <laughs> if you haven't had it, do not recommend it. Get boosted. Get vaccinated. Good stuff. 
button me, Waz. We'll see which one you get. Oh, no. <laughs> there's only one. There. I'm looking at the list. There's like only one in suit. Nailed it. Uh, like my it. Twig and Berry's cold performer of the week oh. is Waz. It's because he picked me. <laughs> we're just getting the same fucking button over talking. and over again. That's a bit of a rivalry going on. Waz, you are my cold performer of the week okay. because you give me the same button. Oh, get cold. <laughs> <laughs> if he uses that button again oh, shit. <laughs> with Tyler alright let's finish off the podcast with some good news Nation Dan let's start off with your Twig and Berry's hot performer of the week oh my hot performer of the week is actually going to include Waz uh, but it's a threesome <laughs> it's a three group so it's Kennedy Kylie and Waz our team of people that headed out to Lloyd Minster this past Saturday with no idea what waited for them at the end of the line uh, it was a blast you guys made some great content out of it thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll see Lloyd and the battle boundary battle of Alberta in our future as well I so, hope so. Great job to the three crew. Kylie, Kennedy, and Waz. You get my hot performers of the week. Oh, oh that's good. This guy oh. is oh. smoking hot. There you go. I'm he also, figured out how to do it for himself. That's weird. Yeah, I'm also <laughs> going to give Waz some love, despite the fact that he remains my cold performer of the week. You guys did a good job. Do you guys have, like, a nickname for your trio? The meme team. Yeah, the, meme, the team? meme team, apparently. I didn't, uh, Kennedy and Kylie came up. I'm just, I'm just there. I'm just here to make content. The Zoomers. Shout out to the meme team. Yeah. Are you even a Zoomer? I, I'm like a millennial. You're right on the line. Yeah. I think he's right on the edit. <laughs> You're on the millennial Zoomer Everyone line. Thinks I'm You're on here. notice. Like the Florida Georgia line, but the millennial Zoomer line, that's what you are. Yeah. I turned 26 in November. Oh my God. I remember I thought for a while there before we met in person that you were like 20. <laughs> I still think Waz is 12. Yeah, I, I think I like Wanya that. always it's says that over and over again. He's like, yes. Waz is 17. He's in high school. He, he's adamant. And you've told him otherwise, but he doesn't. I, do I, I like it. I like feeling young. So. Coomzy, your Twig and Berry's hot performer of the week. Well, the Blue Jays this week had a five-game series against the Tampa Bay Rays, which is a rare thing. This is because the the, the, the season was smushed into a smaller calendar because the first week was lost due to the... Um, there was a, a, was it a lockout or a strike, whatever it was. Um, yeah, so in this five-game series, the Jays had five different starters all toss six innings or more, which I thought was fantastic. You don't often see that in this day and age, so I thought the Blue Jays starting pitching deserves a thumbs up. I don't, I don't know what this button is, but we're going to touch it. What the hell is going on? That would be a no, cold that's... performer button. Oh, okay. I think the bottom four are cold and the <laughs> okay. top four are let me, let me just hot. Let me, let me give this one a try. Oh, get cold. <laughs> oh, it's a new one. Nation Dan, your Twig and Berry's hot performer of the week. I'm going to do it again. It's going to go to Kylie Kennedy. And... Oh, you already went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> oh, get cold. <laughs> Was yeah. your Twig and Berry's hot performer of the week. Uh, actually, okay. Um, I'm going to give it actually to Caroline Schved. Salami, what a uh, new name. Uh, she brought on Jean Principe on her, onto her kickback podcast. So if anyone wants to go check that out, Jean Principe talks footy with Caroline Schmidt on uh, kickback. I got to get used to her new uh, new last name, but uh, you know that comes with time. Professionally, she's still Caroline Schmidt, though. Oh, okay. I didn't yep. know that. Sweet. Okay, so press the button. The big guy uh -huh. is smoking hot. My Twig and Berry's hot performer of the week is, I'm trying to scan right now real quick while I'm doing this, but I can't find the hero who came up with the nickname for Reed Schaefer of Ginger Beef. Oh, that's actually really good. It's fucking amazing. So I thought that was good. Wanye. It's so good. And I'm trying to find whoever the hero was in the comments on our Instagram page that came up with Ginger Beef. That's but so like, good. I don't know who it was, but that nickname for Reed Schaefer is incredible. That's amazing. It's so good. Ginger Beef. As a nickname for Reed Schaefer, hot performer of the week, hands down. That's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Damn it, Waz. <laughs> Damn you, it, Waz. Can you rescind whoever made Waz their hot performer and make yeah. him a cold performer? Yeah, yeah. Like, Dan, you're going to give an amendment to your yes. hot performer, I feel it's like. It's actually just Kylie and Kennedy now. Yeah. Sorry, Waz. That's not good. Great job, but mm, no. Tyler needs to do better with his labeling. Well, now we're blaming Tyler. Yeah. That's fair. Hit the blue one, Waz. Yeah. Hit the blue one. No. Yep. Try try that purple one. You haven't tried it yet. Yeah, the, pur the yeah, purple one. The purple one in the, the, bottom, one in the bottom left corner. Give that yeah. a try. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, <laughs> led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. Little Stephen A. Smith. Sweet. Yeah. Buttons. Buttons. They're a good time. Even if Waz doesn't know how to use them. Still my cold performer, Waz. That's okay. I like you, though. I like you. Our movie tastes are different. Yeah, you just got bad taste. That's all. I mean, okay, let's not let's not start there. And uh, if you're listening to this right now, please never forget Waz is out here killing birds. Allegedly, in my opinion, what birds yeah. aren't real? Look, we don't need to talk about this. Right Waz now. keeps finding dead birds in his neighborhood, 
And allegedly, in my opinion, he's the one putting them there. You're changing their batteries? Yeah. Are you checking to see if they're real, Was Because they're not. <laughs> I remember in, in early COVID when they shut down all the birds to change their batteries. <laughs> they and did. There was no birds. Oh, yeah, for a few weird. That, yeah. Weird. Oh. It is a weird process every couple batteries. of years. Got to change those lithiums. All right. Any final thoughts on the Oilers or the Young Stars tournament or the week coming up? Boo Flames. Agreed. Um, that was my thoughts. How about Connor McDavid <laughs> looking very sexy in the Royal Blues? Looks yep. real sexy yeah. in the Royal Blues. Yeah. Nice haircut, clean shaven. Nice. Looks real good. Nice jawline. All right. That's where we'll wrap it up. For our friends at DoorDash, Oodle Noodle, Cornerstone Insurance, and Twig and Berries, thank you for joining in on Oilers Nation Radio. Please leave your reviews for the podcast. I didn't check if we had any. That's Tyler's job. And he's not here. Avoid the grind. So leave some reviews. You could win a gift card from Oodle Noodle when we bring it back next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Shout out Ginger Beef. I Best. promise I have the right button. Best wishes. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Oilers Nation Radio, delivered by DoorDash. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.